And so Elon writes back to him. He says, what did you get done this week? (laughs) (laughs) What a perfect (laughs) response. And then he says, and then he says, I'm not joining the board. This is a waste of time. (laughs) On the 14th of April, he made an offer. On April 25th, there was an agreement made. Uh, and it was for a ludicrous valuation. It was like 30% above. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's 44. Called a, it's called a bear hug. Okay. So what, explain that. So usually a bear hug is done prior. All right. Hello, sir. Hello. Welcome back. You too. <laughs> <laughs> so today, uh, it's a remarkable day. It's actually Halloween today that we're recording. This will be yeah. out in a few days. Uh, but Daddy Elon Daddy has Elon. done it. <laughs> oh, D-Trump's back. Yep. So we're going to roll the intro and then we're going to talk about... Uh, Elon Musk and his takeover of Twitter. Ex-Special Forces Sniper turned entrepreneur. I've scaled numerous businesses to eight figures. My name is Matt Ryder. This is my podcast. And I'm telling you to put that coffee down. down. As we start, let's give some timeline, right? Because I've done some research. I'm actually, yeah, I've actually done the research here. Young Jamie. Uh, so what happened was on January 31st, must start buying shares in Twitter. Yes. Right? By April, he owns 9.3%. Uh, because of that, he was invited to join the board. Um, and he was going to do that. Twitter were obviously feeling like, something's happening here. Why yes. has Daddy Elon bought 9.3% of us? And so he was going to join the board, but then he started tweeting somewhat irresponsibly on, in their opinion. And he had a tweet that asked, is Twitter dying? And so then... The CEO of Twitter... In a... Probably a... Wanting to tank them. <laughs> in an attempt to kill. Yeah. The CEO uh, texts them. Now, all these texts have come out because Is this they, Jack Dorsey when he no, was CEO? No, this is after This is post-Jack Dorsey. Yeah, and that guy's name... Uh, let me look it up. I can't remember. I've, I wrote it down somewhere. Anyway, doesn't matter. He's fired. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Gone. But so he texts him. He texts Elon and he says, um, it's... It's my responsibility to tell you it's not helping me make Twitter better in the current context in reference to his text. This is fair enough. Yeah, and uh, and so Elon writes back to him. He says, what did you get done this week? (laughs) (laughs) What a perfect (laughs) response. And then he says, so he sends that. That's one text. And then yeah. another one comes through. They in the screenshot that they have available of that, it doesn't have the timestamp. So well, I don't I know what the fuck. Yeah, I don't know what the difference was in between. And what did you get done this week? Yeah, what did you get done this week? And then he says, I'm not joining the board. This is a waste of time. <laughs> right? Um so then uh this is in uh April now. He says that uh he's gonna make an offer, right? So he 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 this is in April, he says he'll start making an offer to take Twitter private. And in on the fourteenth of April he made an offer on April 25th. There was an agreement made. Uh, and it was for a ludicrous valuation. It was like 30% above. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's 44. Called a, it's called a bear hug. Okay. So what, explain that. So usually a bear hug is done privately. Okay. So the board has a responsibility to act in the fiscal best interest of the shareholders. Mm-hmm. That's what the board is there for. Right. Yep. And that's so their job. if he makes an offer that is in the best interest of the shareholders, like they, they have to take it. Of their mandate. Mm. Now, the the board of Twitter is a is a fairly uh, left leaning board, mm-hmm. um, and so is the entire organization. Mm-hmm. And obviously, he's not. He's come out as a Republican, yada yada yada, right? So they're at odds there because mm-hmm. they are like, oh no, he's gonna yeah, he's a bad stuff. guy. Yeah, he's a bad guy. Yeah, um, Orange Man, bad type stuff. Mm-hmm. And so oh, we're gonna get onto Orange Man. Yeah, but so doing it publicly, it it put them in a position where he. Like they almost, they had to say yes. Mm. Otherwise the whole board could lose their job. Yeah. Because it's like, well, you're not acting in the financial interest of the shareholders mm. because like every shareholder at Twitter would have been like, yes, please give me a 30% premium for all my stocks. Mm-hmm. So he was fucking bear hugging them. Mm. Going, no, you will do it. So it's interesting you say that, that they were acting uh, in the best interest of their shareholders and perhaps not themselves because of how things did eventually unfold. Yeah. So let me carry on. Um, so, on April 25th, there's an agreement made, right? And that's this $44 billion, going to buy it, um, which is overpaying for all the shares. Yeah. Uh, and he he's a, you know, like nobody knows exactly who all of his investors are in that. Nobody's talked about that. Yeah. But there's some Saudi money. Right? Oh, there's a lot of all different types of money. Yeah. Yeah. Because like 
the thing is, they, they'd have to get special interest groups to get that money because they wanted so much money, but also like the the revenue to to earnings, like the sorry, the earnings to valuation ratio of Twitter is mind-bogglingly stupid. Yeah. I think it's like 190 times or 160 times gross revenue, not EBIT, not how you would normally. Yeah. Uh, like they're barely a hundred million dollars in revenue. Yeah. Um, and they're and there are several hundred million dollars in debt. Yeah, they've never turned a profit. Yeah, never. It's it like and it, there, there was a YouTube video, which we can maybe put somewhere up there on a day in the life at working with Twitter, and the you person did didn't work. <laughs> they were like, I went to the commissary and I I got a chai latte and then we just chilled out in a silence pod and then yeah. I took a meeting and yeah. then it was like four hours later took another meeting and then it was just a whole bunch of ping pong and like yeah, random yeah. shit. I mean. Awesome. It's just equity and diversity, people. That's, mm. what, that's what Twitter's become. Well, evidently. Uh, okay. So then on May... So April 25, agreement made. On May 13, the deal's on hold uh, because of spam accounts. And yeah. uh, so Elon just starts talking about there's so many spam accounts. There's so many. Um, and he offered a lower price. Yeah. Uh, so then Twitter come out and the CEO says that less than 5% of their accounts are bots. Um. <laughs> But refused to give any evidence, right? Yep. Refused to give any evidence. Uh, and in response to that, um, Elon just tweets the poo emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Richest man in the world. <laughs> and at the CEO of Twitter, right? <laughs> so just a poo emoji. He tagged People him. say he doesn't know anything about social media. Yep. He's the greatest uh, social media mind of our generation. Yeah, Paraga is the guy's name, Paraga. Yeah. So he adds him... Uh, with a poo emoji. <laughs> so then in June, still trying to walk away f- and claim the company is actively resisting and thwarting information, his information rights. Uh, he's still trying to get out of it in June. Uh, in July, he tries to officially call off the whole thing. And that's when all these uh, like lawsuits and everything go crazy. Um, it started as Musk pushing and Twitter resisting. So like initially he was trying to buy Twitter, right? And they, you could tell that the board, as you said, was like a bear hug of like, oh, we kind of have to now, right? Yeah. In the interest of our shareholders. Because he did it publicly, they're in a, they have to. But now the tides have turned and they're like, yeah. no, you're fucking buying this company, right? Yeah. Uh, well, and the so stock, the stock price tanked. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, in July, Twitter formally sues Musk and he sues back. Um, and it all revolves around their inability to... I think, I think Musk used Linklaters, I think, as their main... The main, uh, What's lawyers. that? What do you mean? Just a nasty, nasty, like... Oh, the, the lawyer? Yeah. Yeah, right, well, it didn't work. Um, because, uh, so the whole lawsuit revolves around the bots and that they, they can't provide accurate data on that. Um, and in August, a whistleblower exposes that Twitter actually has no way to count that. Right. So, um, goes in front of, you know, whatever it goes in front of in, in America and they don't properly count spam accounts and Musk uses that to further try and get out of the deal. Then on October 4, uh, he proposes closing the deal on the original terms um, and acknowledges in a call that was like a, it's not a media thing. It was on a call to someone else that the call yep. was recorded that he's grossly overpaid. And as of October 27, he owns Twitter. Yep. Uh, so then on November let that, let 8. That sink in. <laughs> yeah. So on November 8, that's when it'll become, or they take the first steps in it actually becoming a private company. Yep. So that's the timeline. Kind of weird. Like I, is that how you remember it? Did you notice it? Did you report at any stage when, when Musk managed to liquidate $8 billion of Tesla into his personal account without ever, without ever hitting the news? So that's the, that's the interesting part, right? Like speculate with me. Why do you think all this happened? Because, you know, I'm a Daddy Elon fan, like everybody else, yeah. right? I think that he is a different type of human. I'm sure that he makes mistakes, but he's clearly neurodivergent in some way or another. Could be one of those Valerian human beings that only comes out of hib- like hibernation once every ten thousand years, <laughs> possibly in order to hurt or or kill us. Right? One of the two. So, like, we'll find out. I, I'm I'm Team Elon, and I'm hoping that he is a good guy because if he's a bad guy, we're all cooked. Like, you oh, know, yeah. when we eventually all own Teslas, and the Tesla just like the doors lock on it one day and ah! it's driving you to the incineration factory, like that'll be a problem, right? Yeah, I'm hoping those days Terminus. don't come. But so there was some speculation. Me and you talked about like maybe the whole thing was just so that he could take money out of um, out of Tesla uh, without it being – It took $8 billion liquid. So people would so, think, oh, he did that in order to pay for Twitter, so there's nothing wrong with Tesla. Yeah. Don't worry about that. That's what I would say. I reckon like – I reckon he wanted to buy Twitter. I think he probably wanted to buy it and then went in 
realized he was going to grossly overpay for it. Um, but then, like, he kind of raised the money, done the things he wanted to do. And then I think he probably realized, oh, this is a pretty good time to liquidate some cash. Mm-hmm. Because, like, hey, look, everybody. Look what's happening over here. Because, like, there's no other person who could liquidate $8 billion of their own stock without completely crashing the company. Mm. Like, if Mark Zuckerberg did that, there would be no Facebook to log into the next day. Mm-hmm. It would be just a bereft company. Mm-hmm. So it, that I think that that's probably what happened. Like, it probably started as a genuine intent to want to buy it. And then from there, realized he could probably get away with this mm. at the same time. Because that is the hard thing about being a billionaire that owns a giant tech company. If there is a hard thing, is a lot of your money is very, very locked up. Mm. So, like, what Zuckerberg ha- Zuckerberg's obviously a very wealthy man. But from a cash reserve standpoint, he wouldn't have that much. Nowhere near what compared it looks to like, what right? he's worth. Because he, it's all locked. But, like, Facebook is him. He is face Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So, the moment that he tries to liquidate anything like that, all the stockholders would just run away. Yeah. Um, so, like, there's not many people that have been able to do that successfully. Mm-hmm. And eight billion is a decent nest egg. Mm-hmm. I think. So he, you reckon Elon now has that eight billion well, in he, cash, essentially? Well, yeah, he does. Liquid. I mean, he he paid half of it in tax, but um, yeah, man, like. And of the billionaires around, there aren't many cash billionaires. Yeah, that have that, right? That like have that sitting in liquid. Exceptional. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's invested in other things since then, but that dude has a ton of liquid. He pulled it out. I don't know what he put it into, but yeah. he did, it wasn't the Twitter deal. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's other people's money. Yeah. So, like, I think Elon's probably playing 4D chess, I think, in terms of an entrepreneur. He's probably the greatest entrepreneur ever to live. Yeah. Better than Rockefeller and all those dudes. Like, yeah. He's he's he knows what he's doing, yeah, and he's a doer as well. He's a very interesting CEO because mm-hmm. he is also the head engineer of SpaceX. Mm-hmm. Like he's the head engineer, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's a very strange situation. But Twitter is an interesting one because the valuation is crazy stupid, mm-hmm. crazy stupid. Like, and I don't understand. Like you know, but that happens heaps in tech. Like I was talking to a guy the other day. His company just got valued at one billion dollars. Mm-hmm. They have a one million dollar top line revenue. Yeah, right. It's so so. What what's where's that coming from? Well, who knows? So yeah. there's two types of valuation. Essentially, there's a VC valuation and a finance valuation. Okay. Finance valuation is how a bank would value your business. Like if a bank were to value Twitter, they would value it at nothing, be mm-hmm. negative money, mm-hmm. right? But what the the valuation that you're seeing is the last round of money that they raised based on that number. Okay. So, like, Twitter is worth $150 billion. No, no, no. They managed to find some putz who runs a VC firm to buy 3%, right, or whatever, at the valuation of. Okay. Or, like, the stocks are at a valuation of. So, when you buy shares in Twitter on the on the exchange, like, that percentage equals that because they managed to raise money on that, and then when they IPO'd, they managed okay. to maintain that, right? right. Or, and go up. But it's not real. It's fucking pretend. Well, it's real as shit to the people who just got their shares bought, right? Yeah, so yeah. right now, Twitter is for sure worth $44 billion. Yeah, but, you know, in a month's <laughs> time, it'd be worth a hell of a lot less. Because there's a private company, be worth less. Yeah. Well, that's that's what's going to be interesting, right? Is like, what's the, what's the plan for Twitter? Yeah. Uh, so, let's talk. So, now he's got it, right? Like, he owns it. It's yeah. done. Be interesting if he buys Rumble next. That'll be really interesting. Yeah. Who owns Rumble? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but I, I had to look through all their terms and conditions the other day. Mm-hmm. And actually today, right? Because seventh levels starting Rumble. And there's like four different ways that you can have your content on there. And depending on the way that you have it on there is how much of the monetization split you get. Okay. So you can choose to allow Rumble. That's exclusive content. Yeah, right. Okay. So Rumble, ex- ex- but you have to choose all or nothing. Right. So you can have exclusive and that includes YouTube. So you can like literally post nothing anywhere else. That so you can't repurpose that video anywhere else. Okay, right. Just so, that video. So you have yeah. to make specific specific Rumble, Rumble content. content. Yeah, okay. and you get a very high share in the revenue. Yeah. The next one down. Like how high? What what sort of percentage? Oh, I can't remember, but it was like I think it was like forty percent of the revenue. Okay, but that's still not better than uh, YouTube. YouTube's like fifty percent. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, well, in some cases, it's it's more than fifty percent. In some some creators, it's like fifty five percent. Yeah, right. Maybe I, maybe I read it wrong. I was perusing, but I know there's four types. The next one was uh, completely exclusive, except for YouTube. Okay. So you can still post on YouTube. Then it was uh, exclusive and then added in a bunch of stuff, and then it was personal use. Right. So personal use, you get no revenue, mm-hmm. right, whatsoever, but you can just use Rumble to post on do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, but lots of dudes are using Rumble, advertising on Rumble right now. It's going really well. Really? Yeah, Rumble's really growing. Wow, Okay. 
Yeah, we're seeing like a mad diversification. Have you seen like Facebook's like like advertising revenue numbers have done taken a massive dive? Yeah, because it's just they're making it, and for some reason they just released another update making it even harder. The email specifically said, like the email from Facebook from Meta said, we have made the advertising less accurate, less effective, and more expensive. Why? Those are the three. They had checked boxes: less accurate, less effective, more expensive. For real. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Thanks, guys. I was like, okay. So, like, YouTube is, I think if you looked at you, because YouTube was burning cash for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like, five years ago, YouTube never made a dime to profit. I dare say they would be now. Mm -hmm. Because now, like, the advertising on YouTube is uh, is extremely effective. Yeah. Although, why everyone doesn't just pay the fucking five bucks a month for no ads is beyond me. you can't go back. Fucking beyond me. Man, I, I, I'm shocked when I see an ad because I'm not signed into my account. Yeah. I haven't seen an ad on YouTube. I, um, you know, my rip has, he watches these drawing, there's like these drawing tutorial things that he watches. Yeah, right. And I don't want those coming up in my feed and wrecking my history and all that and like confusing the algorithm. So he's not logged into my account. Yeah. And ads come up, right? Yeah. <laughs> like you poor sucker. <laughs> you can get a YouTube kids account, I think. Can you? Yeah. You might have to look into that. There's an app, a YouTube kids app. Yeah. Yeah, it's all verified content only made for kids and the yeah, algorithms, right. you know. He's not on there that much. He watches this one drawing channel that teaches yeah, right. you how to draw. Summer watches terrible content. Summer watches, like, this person who takes, like, Barbie dolls. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, yeah. Loves it. Yeah. Hundreds of millions of views. Hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions. Of millions. CPM. No revenue. Yeah, CPM, <laughs> like, this Point week. zero zero one cent. Yeah. Those kids ain't got no money. Yeah. They can't it's click your ads. They can fair. click them, but they ain't buying anything. Exactly. Um. Okay, so... This ballin' motherfucker walks into Twitter carrying a kitchen kitchen sink. sink. Yeah. And then proceeds to fire. (laughs) 75%? No. So this is the thing. So he fired the CEO and the CFO straight away. um, And two other people who seem to be mostly nameless uh, in the media. Uh, And there's there's all these reports that he's going to fire 75% of the staff. But he, he denies that and there's nowhere has that. Like, when they say they're claiming that he's going to fire 75% of the staff, pretty sure that's just like, what will scare and intimidate people? Let's say that Elon is going to fire 75% of staff. Yeah, because yeah. There's, there's no evidence of probably that. Probably should. He may still. He, yeah, exactly. Probably should. But um, there's no evidence of that, and he denies it. Um, I think what's interesting about Elon sort of, you know, not that I know the guy. If you're watching Daddy Elon. Uh, Imagine this is the one podcast he listens to. Yeah, he listens to it in the car. He's got those guys, those coffee for clothes guys, they're the funniest. It's two cool guys talking them. shit. <laughs> talking about things they barely know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he has been sort of quoted before, like, because he's a universal basic income guy. He supports that. But I think it's because he knows. I think he said he supports that when it, there will be a time and when it's necessary. Yeah, because I think he knows he is going to get half, more than half the world fired. Right? Like, yeah. Because, you know, Tesla's got a truck. Yeah. Right? Uh once it's totally automation, that's the end of all driving roles, really. Yeah. Right? Um, It'll be a great biz op, though. So there'll be syndicated buying of trucks. Mm. That's how it will work. What are you re- uh, that's already a business. So you can buy a big rig for 50 grand. Mm-hmm. They're so shockingly cheap, right? 50 grand will buy you a big rig in the US. Really? Not a brand new but like 2018, 2019, you can buy a big rig. Okay. I was in an Uber when I was in the States, and the guy was a big rig driver. He was telling me about it, and I was like, I don't know how much they cost. How much money? I was... I was just asking them questions about yeah, it. Yeah, right. 50 grand to buy a decent one. Because I know in Australia you're looking like quarter million dollars. Yeah, but I mean, Australia, the pricing of anything is r- ridiculous. Yeah. So, but even that, pretty cheap. I mean, fuck, my car costs a quarter of a million dollars. You can't do anything <laughs> with it. You know? <laughs> true. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your brother's cars are a little bit it's more true. than that. It's you can't true. make a business out of it. Yeah. So in the States, you can syndicate by the truck. Mm-hmm. So you own 20% of the truck, you have 20% of the maintenance, and then you you have 20% of the revenue, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, I think what will happen is those trucks will obviously be a lot more expensive, mm. but they will not have a lot of the costs associated with, which is the fuel and the time. You'll be able to be far more efficient in how you run them because yeah. like there's no driver. Yeah. So it'll be a legit business and then people will start being coaches on how to do that and the road will continue. You'll be, you'll, you'll be selling that. I've already, we're in talks with a trucking automation guy at the moment. Really? Yeah. There you go. The world, the world's a strange place. So they like to take the money out of the trucker's hands and put it into the sales guy's hands. Hey, whatever works. Lucky you're listening to the sales guy podcast. <laughs> not the <laughs> yeah, trucking. not the truck guy podcast. Yeah, those poor guys. Um, okay, so he walks in carrying a kitchen sink. What a prop. 
and he does it real mad awkwardly, just him by himself, right? Yeah. Like it. <laughs> it's almost like it didn't make any sense. <laughs> My favorite part is he then doesn't know what to do with it. So yeah. he walks in, he's carrying it, and then he can see him like, this thing's fucking heavy, where do I put it? Yeah. And, and it's got no, it's a sink, right? So there's no base for him to put it down. So he's like, oh, fuck. And then they <laughs> cut the camera, right? Where he obviously was like, get one of these people in. Why yeah. am I holding this? <laughs> yeah. Um, Let that sink in. Yeah. So he walks in, fires the CEO, CFO. There's talk of 75% of the staff. Um, uh, he then tweets... The bird is freed. Yep. Okay? In response to that comes uh, – now let me make sure I'm getting this dude's position right. I didn't even bother with his name, but he's the EU Commission of the Internal Market, whatever the fuck job yeah, that is. Yeah, so the, the EU has very, very strict terms on what you can and can't say on social media platforms. So he replies immediately to the bird is free, and he says, in Europe – the bird will fly by our rules. Uh, And he's referring to the requirement of tech companies to take down hate speech, abuse, and incitement. I would just remove the platform from those rules. Well, this is what's interesting. That's what I would do as as him. I would go, okay, I'll take the hit for a little while because he has probably has a huge cash runway. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming he overborrowed by a fair few billion, Mm -hmm. you know, at least 10, I would say, that he'd have as a cash runway. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, And then from there, I I would remove from the market uh, and then from Europe, you reckon that I, I would, I would in the short term, I would remove from Europe, um, or but I would stay in the non-EU countries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I would surround. I would do the op. I would do the Putin strategy. Yeah. yeah. And I would surround it, and but I wouldn't allow it in those countries, and I would make the people demand. Yeah. That the government make the changes required to let Twitter back in. Yeah. Well, so the commentary around it, when in Europe, they're now saying that you know we you'll you'll the social media will look the way we want it to look. Yeah. You know, authoritarian regimes like that quite a bit as well. Yeah. Right? Like dictators also yeah. very much like to control the way that social media and what people are allowed to say on it. So I think that, exactly as you point out there, I think that that will come to a head at some point. Yeah. If you um, remove the platform, people people who use Twitter love it. They rely on it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't use it. I don't really give two shits about it. I'll probably get back on it now because well, it's more interesting. So what happens now? Right? Like what happens on Twitter now? Like, from a business standpoint, that's what we're here talking about, right? Sales, marketing, that kind of shit. Yeah. Do, do like, you've never advertised on Twitter. We set up an account for you and that was as far as it went. We did yeah. the same for me. Like, yeah. when, when, when he announced it, I was like, oh, well, I never used Twitter. Daddy Elon says I have to get it, so yeah. off I go to get it. But n- jokes aside, I assumed when he said he was buying it and didn't know any of this detail. Like, I just woke up to the morning one day and it said, like, Elon Musk buying Twitter. T- buying t- t- Twitter. The thing is, like, if you get rid of the infrastructure, it's it's already a negatively revenue-producing entity. Mm-hmm. So get rid of all the infrastructure. Fire everyone that has anything to do with Europe. Okay. F- get rid of all the offices, leases, sell it off. Just, like, fire sell everything Europe. Mm. Fire hundreds of thousands of people and say, your government made me do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. what I'd do. Like that seems like the most logical step, right? Yeah. Because it's not like he has a giant profit center mm. in Europe. He doesn't have a profit center anywhere. Mm-hmm. So the best place to build a tech company is in the US. Mm-hmm. So why not just rebuild it in the US and the supporting states? Like Australia, I don't think we have those laws on the books when it comes to hate speech on Twitter and stuff like that. Well, I'm not sure about that. Um, but we do have, we, we, we certainly don't have freedom um, of speech. Well, that's the thing. It's not right? codified in the constitution. So that's what's interesting. And I think it, depending on where our listeners are, I know there's a lot of people in the States that are listeners, is a lot of people don't realize where people, a lot of people outside the US. The US is the only place that has yeah, it. Yeah. A only. lot of a lot of people don't recognize the fact that you have know, freedom of speech and everybody carries on about freedom of speech. Like you are probably oh, there's a couple of like Eastern Bloc who like resist it all the way, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but in the US you're pretty much the only large country that has freedom of speech. We yeah. don't have that. Everyone th- here thinks we have it though. You no. just speak to people and I go, no, we don't have it. And they go, yeah. no, we do. And I go, you want to make a bet? Yeah. There was a, there was a comedian that got jailed for 18 months for making a joke about Islam. That happened like two years ago. Yeah. And I think like what it is, is in Australia is, uh, I can't remember the exact section bill. 18. I think. Yeah. Or maybe that's Canada. It's there, but anyway, it's, it's that you're not allowed to, um, be an asshole. So you can still say what you want, but you can't say it in order to upset someone. 
that's the just, that's the delineation. Such a subjective. Well, that's the issue, right? And if you recall, it was Andrew Bolt that really made that a high profile case. It was yeah. um, a, a article that he wrote that revolved around uh, Indigenous woman's heritage, uh, and that got him in a lot of. And he he was found guilty. It it, it like they it held up, right? So we do not have freedom of speech. You can't just say whatever you want. Uh, but online, like you can just say things into the ether. Because here it's like you can't say it to upset a person. As right? long as you don't at anybody, you're fine. Probably. I don't know, right? I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, in the States, there's there's no, like what happens currently, and there's a lot of people pushing to change this, is the tech platforms are not responsible for what is said on them. That is the that is the case currently. You, you are responsible for what's said. And they've done a good job of kind of passing the buck, the buck on that in that like if you're a, an admin of a group, you can be responsible for posts in the group, right? Yeah. Um, but the company itself, they're not. They're not at all. Yeah. Which I think is like... Uh, seems fair. Yeah. It to me. Seems like that's a pretty good compromise. Yeah. But there's push for that to come in in the States. So it'd be interesting to see if that, like well, now, that. that could be advanced as a panic response to this. What do you reckon? Um, I, don't, I can't see it happening in the US. I think people like there's a reason why it's the Second Amendment, right? I'm mm-hmm. sorry, the, the the First Amendment, mm-hmm. right? It's the most important thing. Second thing being guns, being the Second Amendment, being the second most important yeah. thing. That's yeah. why it's written in that order, you know? Yeah, I mean? yeah. So, um, like having grown up in the states, it, it's a very it's sort of like sort of small social things that you don't really notice until you leave, mm-hmm. you know. But that that freedom of speech, I think, is an important component of and 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 Twitter is they're supposed to be soapboxes, right? They're supposed to be the town square of where you can just go and say whatever you want and people are free to disagree with you. That's where the soapbox come from. Yeah. People come in, they grab a box, right, soapbox, and they stand on there and they say what they want. They say what they feel in the town square and then people can call them a fucking idiot, throw rotten tomatoes at them, but they have an opportunity to say it. Yeah. And that's like sort of the only place that's that's held that up. Yeah. Uh, which, which is why the greatest innovations... Greatest innovations will happen through conflict. Yeah. And so, like, for me, I think the best way, like, if someone has a really shitty idea, yeah, the best way is to just ask them questions about it. Yeah. Whereas, like, in a non-freedom of speech environment, then you end up with all these echo chambers of people having shitty ideas mm-hmm. but being really siloed. Mm-hmm. And then, like, they don't get asked questions about it, which means, like, they don't, people don't have an opportunity to see how stupid some of those views are. Mm. Yeah. So, I totally agree. Uh, but let me play devil's advocate is that in the past you had to stand on your soapbox and you had access to the 10 people who were there. Yeah. Right. So the, the the critique of that not applying, that template not applying to social media is that now the reach of those people is, you know, unlimited and their ability to radicalize uh, and reach, you know, marginalized people, fringe groups, that kind of stuff is massively increased. So I would say, do you know what the Federalist Papers are? So the Federalist Papers are is what Andrew, uh, was Alexander Hamilton, wrote in order to get the Constitution of the United States written. Okay. Right? So this is like pre-Constitution. The Federalist Papers was a series of 50, I could be wrong, I'm sure the comments will let me know, but I think it's 51 essays. Okay. It was supposed to be three men, and then uh, Alexander Hamilton ended up writing almost all of them. He wrote 35 of the 51, I believe. Killer. Right? Um, and they're just papers which were disseminated throughout New York, and then they got further and further and further. But they just physically wrote them down. Okay. Right? That Federalist paper, they became so profound that that became, they became the basis of the U.S. Constitution. Okay. And that is during a time where there was no Twitter, there was no okay. nothing. So that, that spread to the entire country, uh, of which then Hamilton was then, he like, he got the treasury. Okay. Right? So... Um, and it was all because of that. Yeah, so he was sort of fighting against and he managed to get that through because of those essays. Okay. So now, listen, Alexander Hamilton's obviously a very smart, once in a, you know, probably multi-generational type human being. Not till Elon Musk came along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, like, it goes to show that with the correct application yeah. of intelligence, intent, and something that's well-written or an argument that is worthwhile, I, I, I don't think you need, like, to have Twitter to okay. make it go the distance you know it's like when people say oh they weren't counting on people having guns like they have now Mm. in the second amendment it's like well have you read the second amendment yeah they fucking were Mm. like there are specific sightings of people like asking okay yeah but i have six cannons Mm. at my house they go 
fucking oath you can have cannons, brother. Fire them up. They go fire them away. And they're yeah. like, because they even had Gatling guns by then. They yeah, had, that's what I was going to say. They yeah. had machine guns back then. And pe- people don't really realize what the intent of that was. It's like, no, the intent of that amendment is to stop the government mm. from being able to take you down. Mm. So it's like, anything we have, sort of, you can have. Mm. You know? Um, but... So I think like the fir- I think I think you know a good message will go a long way even if you don't have a huge platform. Yeah. Okay. Excellent rebuttal, sir. I I have nothing to come back from. <laughs> Mostly because I was only doing it to play devil's advocate. I I agree yeah. with you 100. percent But I grew up in the U.S., so so I do have a different view on a lot of that stuff than most people do, especially in Australia. Yeah. Like my view on guns is different to yours. Yeah. Well, hit, you know? hit us with it. Let's get like let, I'm let's like, make sure we get cancelled. Like I'm Second Amendment. Yep. Sweet. Sounds good. Um. Like I, I didn't don't know it's different to mine. Well, I've talked to you about it before. Yeah, I, I'm pro gun. I mean, fuck whatever. Yeah. I, I think that um, my take on that is that America should keep their guns, but I don't think we should. Like I, I, it, like I think because it's just culturally very different, and I think yeah. that um, like if we still had guns, we should be allowed to keep them too. But yeah. we don't, and so I think that the change is more dangerous than yeah. um, than leaving it the way it is. Yeah, that's fair enough. I thought the I wasn't here during the buyback, mm. but my uncle was telling me about it. Said it was pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, like well, I mean, I was in high school, buyback. right? Like I was in high you school, know? so I don't I don't know too much about it. I didn't have any guns or anything. Yeah. But the the sentiment in Australia, that as I recall, you know, now of course there'll be people that disagree with this because they felt differently. But overall, the sentiment in Australia was like, yeah, all right. Fair but enough. that's kind of the sentiment for anything. Australia is a pretty apathetic. Country. This is what I mean. Right. Like, so that's yeah, why, right. that's why it's an okay. Can we still go to the to beach. Yeah, yeah. It'd be sweet. Yeah. All right. Fuck. I probably don't need that. I'd I like think it, it works in Australia, but I also think that like we have like, it's a very compliant nation. Yeah. To a fault. I think totally. I think, yeah. Like government could be like, Hey, everyone jump off that cliff and be like, all right. There'd be yeah. a good chunk of people. They'd be like, mate, just jump off the fucking cliff. All right. Yeah. Well, it'd be interesting to see how that goes again in the future, because I think now that like a lot of the, you know, say the vaccination stuff, right. Cause most, yeah. of, most people say, I was one of them. I was just like, Oh fuck, I'm going to get it anyway. In fact, I jumped the queue. I pulled the disabled <laughs> veteran and fucking was like, oh, I'm getting it early. Fuck all you. You can die yeah, of COVID. Yeah. And now, now that it's come out that there was actually no reason for everyone to get it. Like, you get it for yourself, but you're not going to stop transmission and you're not going to make it less likely to kill grandma if she got it, if she got her vaccine, right? I think now that people are starting to find that out, that they're starting to be like, hey, my buddy got fired. Like, because he he didn't do it. Like, this is unfair. Well, I had, like, family members on social media go, if you're not going to get the vaccine, you can fucking unfriend me now i was like interesting bold it's a bold choice cotton let's see how it works out for him yeah but yeah i think like we had a very like we're a very interesting country because we're so small Mm. so i see like a lot of people this is getting a bit off top but i see a lot of people there's no topic like like oh like why don't why doesn't america just use the same system we do uh because we they have double the people in la yeah there's 52 million people in california yeah doesn't like work. if we had 52 million people in this country, it wouldn't work. Yeah. It would collapse like a dying star. I think it's only like only 40% of people in Australia pay any effective tax. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 40%. So 60% of people pay zero effective tax because the net, the network, they still pay tax. They but cost they, more than they, they cost more to the government than what they bring in. Yeah. So like there's a this very small percentage of people in Australia that are actually paying all of the bill. Mm. Um, and like, that's fine for now. But, you know, you, you keep extrapolating that out and we get more and more and more people. And especially if, like, you know, currently what's happening is, like, the, the divide between rich and poor is getting bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, the middle class is growing too, though. So, like, overall, mm-hmm. everyone's doing better. You know what I mean? Like, the rich are doing better. The poor are doing better than what the poor were 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. The middle class is getting bigger, but the rich are getting much richer. Yeah. Like, um, and, and so, like, but if that, <laughs> that keeps going and that 40%, that don't pay tax turns into like, you know, so that 60% turns into 80% of people that don't pay any tax. It's going to be a hefty burden for those top yeah. income earners to, yeah, to, absolutely. to do. And it's like, well, then I'll just, you know, do like what the prime minister uh, of the of UK's missus is doing. And she's a, a non-tax resident UK billionaire. Yeah. yeah. Snap it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I live here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I live here. I oh, just don't no. pay tax here. Oh, I'm not paying any tax. No, not here. Uh, if you have a problem with that, talk to my husband. I pay tax on the other man. He's the prime minister, so fuck yeah. off. Yeah. yeah, that's an interesting one too. Yeah, that's an interesting one to see like how how bad someone can be at their job because that chick she made two decisions. 
<laughs> well, it's funny because it, it does speak to what you mentioned a few episodes ago when we were talking about the um, CEO of Telstra, right? Where he's like, I actually don't do a lot, but the things I do are super important. So I spend a lot of time thinking about them. Yeah. And I think that's evident when you see like, oh, anyone could be the prime minister. And it's nope. Like <laughs> <laughs> well, like when I interviewed Tony Abbott. Yeah. You know, the amount of 4D chess and I think like implications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll link that up here somewhere. Yeah. When I interviewed the ex prime minister of Australia, but like the amount of 4D chess that you're having to play all the time and sort of implications of every conversation and decision yeah. would be so stressful. I mean, have a look at like old Biden. Like when he came in, he looked like he was doing all right. I just saw a video of him. He was fucking shuffling along like an old man doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. Well, right? man, I had an argument with a guy on Facebook. Not an argument, but sort of a, a conversation. It's a good way. Good place to have an argument. Yeah. Usually but it was years ago he was complaining about Tony Abbott and it was a decision he made about submarines. And, and like out of government, he was. He had one opinion on submarines and in government he had another and this guy was carrying on about it. And I was like, hey, did it occur to you that when he wasn't the prime minister, he didn't have as much information as he has now as the prime minister? Yeah. And and like I'm no – like I don't, I don't like any politician to be totally frank. So I'm not defending anyone or any side. I'm an anarchist. I think that we should fucking throw the table up at every yeah. man for himself. It'd benefit me and you. I feel like I'm <laughs> like I will be fine. Right? Yeah, yeah. So long as I don't go down the first 10 minutes, like once, yeah. as long as I, I get everything him together. Him on leash. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally fine. So like I'm on no sides. I don't have a political affiliation, right? But what I will say is like having, you know, you as well, like having worked in government and especially being in the army and being behind closed doors in some of those conversations as the like the gun in the room for those conversations is people don't know like what the fuck is actually going on until yeah. they're in the job and they're like, okay, now you get the clearance, right? Yeah. And now you get to and find out like, what the uh, fuck is actually happening I spoke here. to Tony about all this because he's uh, my, so the ex-Prime Minister of Australia, Tony Abbott, for those of you who don't know, let's like Prime Minister like the President, right? Same thing. Mm -hmm. um, my wife, uh, her godfather is Tony. Yeah. So at, when he was Prime Minister, I had Christmas at Parliament House, at the at, at, which is the White House, is equivalent, right? Yeah. So I had Christmas. Kirribilli House. Yeah, Kirribilli okay, sorry, Kirribilli House. And I, remember I literally spoke to him, because I've known Tony for a very long time. Uh, I had I spoke to him a couple years after he stopped being a PM. I was like, hey, man, why did you say one thing and do another? Yeah. I was like, no judgment. I'm sure you had a reason, but tell me. And he said, like, we were presented a set of books when he was leader of the opposition. And those were not the real books. Yeah. They were cooked. Then when he got in, he was like, oh, no. Yeah. But he can't say that to the people because then it will induce a fucking panic. Yeah. When people in, if people realize like, oh, it's all bullshit. This is a house of cards that's all being yeah. fucked up. Yeah. yeah. And so he went like, he actually, this is, this is why I respect him so much because he said, I made the decision to be the bad guy in public so I could do what I thought was necessary for the country. Mm. And I was like, fuck, man. Like, that's... That's a difficult thing to do because mm. he got fucking hammered, mm. right? And like he did. And a this is in job. contrast to Kevin Rudd, right? Yeah, like Kevin Rudd. And again, I don't have a political affiliation. I don't give a fuck left that or right, whatever. But he did the opposite. He was like, "Guys, I'm the good guy," and meanwhile was just shanking everyone and yeah. fucking everything up and complaining that it was cold in a helicopter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But speaking of politicians, old D Trump's back on, back on Twitter. Okay, so no, he's not. So. No. Uh, he will be. Well, we don't know. So this is what's happening with Twitter. We're back on track. We're excellent segue, sir. Uh, so he had said, uh, Elon had said that he will reinstate Trump, right, on Twitter. He will reinstate him. He said that many months ago, but he has not yet, right? And he said that before any huge changes, so he, he sent out an email and we wouldn't have got the email here because we haven't advertised on Twitter, on Twitter. but he sent out an email and uh, he said that uh, Twitter will not become a free-for-all hellscape, right? Because he now has to figure out how the fuck to make money out of Twitter, right? And I'm sure that he's got some plan for it, but a, a better big chunk of that money is advertising revenue, which accounts for, I, mean, I, I wrote this down as well, it. yeah, so uh, presently, I think it's 87% or something like that of Twitter's revenue come 75%. No, no, no. Uh, I've lost it. But it's like more than 80% of their money comes from advertisers with their shitty ads in the feed, right? And so he sends out this email. It says it, Twitter will not become a free-for-all hellscape. Don't worry. Like, don't pull your advertising. And that's what a lot of the media were focusing on. Like I just watched every report that's coming out of it and that's what they all want to talk about is how Twitter's about to become a free-for-all because the, the naughty people are going to be allowed to say what they want to say. Now what did happen was there was a 500% increase in racial slurs. Day one, like <laughs> yesterday, 
right? 500% increase in racial slurs straight away. So that's when Elon's like, well, it won't become the free-for-all hell. I wonder what side's that coming from now. Well. Like, that seems like an intentional. Maybe those bots are busy. Yeah, yeah. Right? So he has not reinstated Trump because there's going to be no changes to actual policy and what happens uh, until he set up a, a content moderation council. Now, no one knows who's going to be on that and what that's going to be. I remember him talking about it and he said, each side will be equally disappointed. There you go. Which is like probably the, the best line to go down. I think Daddy Elon will probably figure it out. I like that you're using my term now. Yeah. Daddy Elon. I think, I think he'll out. figure it out. Yeah. Like if anyone can, because he has access to the greatest minds, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it is, I think when you're looking at it as a problem of, I think I think Twitter and like uh, Project Veritas has confirm this you record project veritas uh project veritas they're a they're, they're an ind independent journalism organization okay, yeah, yeah. that absolutely do like they're the only true journalist left okay right they infiltrated twitter mm -hmm. to see what was going on and they're not left or right leaning they destroy both sides mm -hmm. right um Good for them. and uh man twitter is clearly 100 percent intentionally silencing anything that isn't a left-wing voice there okay no doubt about it okay right project veritas like they had all the undercover stuff going like with like people and they were in meetings and it was like, how do we stop these fucking Republicans from doing X, Y, Z? Mm -hmm. And like they completely, it's been proven, mm -hmm. right? So I think like if you're coming at the content moderation from how do we stop a particular side, then you've automatically fucked it. Yeah, totally. Which, which is why Twitter has just been a very unpleasant place for a lot of people. Like the fact that the Ayatollah Khomeini has an account and that Jordan Peterson has been banned is yeah. fucking crazy. Ayatollah Khomeini has been spouting out for years on Twitter about killing all Jews. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's madness. Yeah. And then they ban fucking Jordan Peterson. Yeah. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. ISIS has an account. The Taliban has an account. Well, the Taliban's a legitimate political party again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe that? Yeah. And so, it, like, they have accounts, but yeah. then... And, and like, uh, Al Sharpton. Mm -hmm. Has an account. I mean, fuck the amount of crazy shit that Al Sharpton is. Who's saying, I don't is. even know that. Either. Al Sharpton's like that. Uh, he was a reverend, but he's just. Oh, the, the yeah, yeah, the, just a yeah, fucking yeah, okay, scumbag. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. I mean, the shit he said about white people, about Jews, about you know anyone that's not him in particular is is horrendous. Yeah. Um, and the fact that he has an account is you know, and other people don't. Like, listen, they can both. They can all have one. I don't give a shit. Doesn't. Yeah. It's almost impossible to offend me personally. Yeah. But the fact that it's so heavily skewed one sided, like. You know, like it makes no sense when well, you actually have a look at it. So if you come together and go, all right, cool, these are the restrictions, and it starts at a center point and then works its way out, yeah. you go, okay, cool. And as a private company, I have absolutely no problem him doing whatever he wants. Yeah. When it's a publicly traded company, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But as a private institution, you can just go chum, boom, like that. And like, if you want to work in the rules, you can work in the rules. Yeah. So you, you'd you imagine though, like if there's no lean to it, an algorithm would be probably pretty easy to train. If you say, hey, these are the bad words and the bad context that we, we sort of yeah. well-meaning people, regardless of their political affiliation, agree like wholeheartedly. Yeah being, you know, racial slurs and um, like threats of violence, all that kind of shit, that's off the table no matter what's, whether you're, no matter who you're pointing those slurs at racially or no matter who you're pointing that violence at, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. That's probably a pretty easy thing to moderate. Doxing you, would be easy. Yeah, if you don't say, but they're allowed to do it and they're not. Yeah, see, that, that would be really tricky because I've seen like people have like mimicked posts. Yeah. And one gets shut down, account ban, and then one other one gets yeah. put on the trending. Well, do you remember years ago when we were in that business group, the cult, the business cult? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, right. And they made me the sergeant at arms. You remember that, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, I, first day, sent out, like, all these warning letters to people. So the way it worked, it was like you get two warning letters and then you can be kicked out of the group, right? And so they, w I was the person that had to send out the warning letters. Yeah. And so I immediately sent almost everyone. I was like, fucking here you go, right? Because, like, these are the rules. And, like, for all the different things being like all these bullshit, stupid fucking cult things that they used to do. Yeah, yeah. So um, I sent out these warning letters. And I wrote in the thing, I was like, hey, this is not personal. It may as well be automated, right? The, I in fact, I don't know why this isn't automated. Everything else in this stupid thing is automated. We've got an app. I don't know why. Like, if you broke the rules, it's obvious because it's, like, non-attendance, right? So they keep a roll. Here's the warning letter for it. And everyone was cool with it because it was like, oh, I said to them, it's not personal, this is the rules. They've asked me to be the person that sends the email. I'm fucking happy to send the email. But then I was like, at the end of the thing one day, I'm like, okay, these are the people that didn't show up and these are the guys that are getting the warning letters. They're like, oh, don't send one to him. And I was like, excuse me, what? They're like, no, he, 
don't don't send one to him. I was like, no, no, he gets one. Yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, everyone else should be pissed off. And now, so do you. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. and they're like, no, no, but we don't need to. And I was like, no, we fucking need to. That's yeah. the point, right? Yeah, yeah. Is like, no wonder no one wants this job. That I was like, yeah, I'll take the job, whatever, right? Yeah. And it was like, no wonder no one else wants it because you get the target put on your back because you're doing it to some people and not you're enforcing the rules on some people and not others. I was like, no wonder people are fucking angry about this. So where everyone's getting the letter, right? They're like, oh god. And I was like, and you'll fucking get one too. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't I'll care. give myself one. And then I got drunk and me and the regional director had it out on Facebook. <laughs> Do you remember that? And I people do. were texting me, please stop. I was like, every <laughs> every time you tell me to stop, I'm going harder. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, well, that guy, I would love, we should try and get him on the podcast. That would be interesting, right? Yeah. Because like, I'm curious how he got to a position of leadership with no discernible leadership skills. You should send and him an email saying, hey, could you come on the podcast? Yeah. Because we'd love to see how you got into a position of leadership with no discernible skills. No discernible skills. And I had it, like, I still got the emails back and forth with him when he was telling me that like, I was disrespectful and whatever. And I was like, mate, the thing is, like, I literally, you know, in what realm do you command respect? Well, I was like, you know, I think it was six months earlier was the sniper platoon sergeant. So, like, if we're going to talk business and all of that, if we're going to talk about accounting or whatever, you guys, everybody in this group knows more than me. Literally every single person, I don't know anything about any of that. This is, like, I was technically still in the army at that point, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, but if we're going to talk about managing people and leadership of people, none of you have a fucking clue because you're all small business owners. You employ two or three people at a maximum. I run a sniper platoon, right? So, like, if you want to talk about difficult people to manage... Very difficult. <laughs> Exhibit A. A bunch. <laughs> First of all, you get a bunch of Special Forces dudes and then make specifically select them for their ability to work alone. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I never thought of it that way. Right? Yeah. And now put them all together and make them work as a team. Right? Oh, man. Good Sni luck. We should have a whole thing on the dynamics of sniper platoon because it is a <laughs> fucking shit show. Totally. It is the most toxic place I've ever worked. Yeah, well, I, I feel like I did a good job as a Bravo uh, because I knew that's the I case. Right? I, wasn't, I wasn't in your team. Mooney was my echo. Yeah. Remember that? Anyway, you were long gone by then. You were, you were out yeah. like for a long time. Anyway, back to Twitter. Donald has not been brought back, but he potentially will because they're going to create this content moderation council and then that is going to decide... Where yeah. things go from there. What did he do? That guy? He did that one. It was the Capitol Hill riot. So that's what that's yeah. what they use. So they the, it's incitement is what they got him for. So they said that he incited that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, which he did. <laughs> I yeah. mean, like it, he did. <laughs> <laughs> but they have no right. They have no obligation to kick him off for that. So here's that's the thing, right? Yeah. So in in Europe potentially they could like they're required to do something about that, not necessarily kick him off, but. You know, take down the tweet, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but in the US, they, there's n there's no requirement. Um, so uh, Trump said on his own platform, um, Truth kind of, something like that? Yeah, Truth Social or something like that. Yeah. Uh, he's happy that Twitter is now in safe hands, but he hasn't indicated whether he would even come back. Yeah. Yeah. I think he said previously he doesn't need to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's super interesting what he's. Um, I think them taking him off Twitter was a mistake. Oh, huge. If they... They could have just shadow banned him. They could have just moderated his content. But nah, but even so, like, if you are not for Trump, whatever, I don't give a shit if people are for or against him, you you sort of want him to be able to say the most crazy shit that possible. Because, like, the more he did that, the, the more negative train came towards him. 100%. So I think, like, they've done him a massive service by kicking him off. Mm -hmm. Because, like... Now the only things you see of him are good. Yeah. Yeah. That's he, it. He controls what you see. He controls what you see. Yeah. And and uh, yeah, I think in like that video he put out a while ago. Yeah. Mate, that was a fucking master class. Yeah. That video, I don't care who, what political aisle you sit on. You watch that video, you go, that guy's going to win the presidency. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, pretty interesting. Well, so I think that this sort of begs a question that in 2016, social media was blooming but had not blossomed and i think that people perhaps didn't realize the effect or certainly in the u.s people didn't necessarily realize the effect that using twitter and other platforms could sway the election and people who knew how to do that did that yeah right so uh, he, he he ran a smart campaign yeah you know? 
Whereas I don't think Hillary ran a smart campaign. No. Like she didn't go to all the states and, you know, she just didn't run a campaign yep. um, that she should have in order to win. Like so by 2020, the powers that be knew how to like manipulate via social media and control what's seen. And as we've discussed that the social media is most like most of those tech platforms are quite left leaning. I think the big fear now is that if Twitter doesn't have a political affiliation or even if like if Musk is right leaning, if he is a Republican, right? But if he truly decides that, he, no, this is just a free for all and, and the truth will be told here and, and lies will be told here and anyone yeah. can say anything. So I think it's the way to go. If everyone's on an equal footing, I think that's the biggest concern like for, not the biggest concern for the general public, but for the media who are very much trying to portray this as a very bad thing. The, yeah. the, the, the vibe that I got as I just spent a whole bunch of time consuming all of it is that first of all, they all want to talk about what an idiot Elon is for overpaying and, and it's crazy when people would say he's a moron. It, it's I saw some people going like a fucking uh uh like a sophomoric, um over exaggerated intelligent in like like intellect and I was like, mate, the guy's the fucking head engineer at SpaceX. Yeah. Like he's a legit rocket scientist. Yeah. He's also the most successful entrepreneur ever. Yeah. Like he's we are shaved apes compared to that human being. Yeah. Then it, does that mean he makes all the right decisions? No. Because yeah. clearly his decision making around women is not fantastic. <laughs> um, He's a breeder, that's for sure. Yeah. He's got 34 fucking kids now or some shit. Um, but yeah, like, so, but I mean, you know, in terms of his decision, his problem solving capabilities, I think he's, you know, probably top few on the planet. Yeah. It, it's, it's super interesting to me to see a bunch of like... Um, not even journalists, I won't say that, like commentators. They're people who just, their it's their opinion. To, it's their job to give their opinion. And fair yeah. enough, that's, that's you know, they're getting, they're getting paid to just talk into microphones. Here we are. Uh, but claiming that he's an idiot and he doesn't know what he's doing and it's kind of mocking him through it, I think is very funny. But it shows me, it tells me that I think there's a level of panic and concern around it. Yeah. Right? Like, you, like it, I think that it shows that sort of the pendulum is starting to swing back uh, to an extent and there's a lot of concern about that in the zeitgeist. That's the feeling yeah. I got from it. I think like if you've got in the political realm, I, th I think people underestimate the importance of having two distinct ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. Like you have a fiscally conservative that is ultimately less interested in the well-being of an individual, mm -hmm. but the right of that individual to do whatever they want, which is a right-leaning and then a left leaning, which is compassionate, less concerned with the rights of the individual and more concerned with the outcomes as a whole. Mm -hmm. Right? That's left leaning. Mm -hmm. And there's an extreme importance of both sides. Yeah, totally. Like you have to have the swings and the pendulums of both. You don't want yeah. the right to always be in control because you'll have an extraordinarily well managed country that is very fiscally responsible and a lot of people that are really hurting. Yeah. Right? But they just got to pull themselves up by the bootstraps. Right. And then if you only have left-leaning, <laughs> yeah. you'll have an extraordinarily poorly managed government yeah. that spends out of control yeah. and alienates all the intelligent people to leaving, Yeah, which is what's happened in a lot of other countries yeah. across the world. Like, that's the outcome of that. Yeah. So you either alienate the highest achievers and they leave, mm -hmm. or you alienate the lowest achievers, but you can't do either. Because you end up with enormous social problems either way and they collapse eventually. Mm. So you have to have a big swing like that. The problem is it starts out like this and it goes, doon, 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 and then hopefully it goes back in like this, right? Yeah. It's almost like each president in the US is the counterpart and the other side of the pendulum. So like oh, totally. Barack I mean, took it's it fairly be. left. Yeah. Like he was really, he really was. Like his, the strategy he employed in the military and some of his social policy was very, very left-leaning. Mm -hmm. But he was fucking phenomenal at talking about it. Mm -hmm. So he was able to kind of do that. And then you had old Trumpy out come over here and then mm -hmm. you've got, you know, Biden's a little bit in. So hopefully the next cat's a little bit in and then he go in, 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 you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> we'll figure it out. I, I'll, I'll hit you with a crazy theory. Maybe is the wrong platform for it, but I will anyway. Yeah. Right? There's a there's pretty strong evidence that political affiliation is genetic. All right, so like how you feel, um, left or right leaning, is genetic, and they have that in a couple of different ways. Most notably, twin studies. Right, so that's where they sort of get that. Um, but there's pretty strong evidence for it. I think for the most part, it's agreed upon. Right, anything that is genetic hardwired like that has a function. 
the, anything that you do, like nature doesn't make accidents like that, right? Or, or nature only makes accidents, but they either get selected for or not. Yeah. And so the fact that you, however many billion years have led to us being these kind of humans means that it works and the society has to work, right? So left and right leaning people have to coexist together. There's a function for it. And it's probably not political in my opinion. In my opinion, yeah, it'll it, be. it goes back to more tribal sort of living yeah. and it is more of a hunting style and technique. So everybody that I know that is quite right-leaning. So like uh, I, I use myself as an example. I think that I am genetically fairly right-leaning, but through experience I, am, I feel very drawn to left-leaning pol- policies. Like I'm very more into social um, – like I, I, I believe that we shouldn't just leave people by the wayside, right? So I feel that way through learned experience, but every now and again, I'm like, oh, that just, it, we do have to make those other decisions though, right? Like we do yeah, have yeah. to make the hard decisions sometimes, but I don't want to all the time. So from my observations, a lot of right-leaning people are very direct, right? In their actions. They're always direct in their actions. They're like up the guts, lots of smoke, like go straight <laughs> at it, right? Yeah, That's yeah. how they operate. And that's how they would hunt. And and I believe that a lot of left-leaning people are more like, sub, what's the right word, sub, subversive in their action. They like would go the long way and they'll do things slower and they'll do things like a little bit more sneaky. And in a hunting fashion, they'll do that as well. But when you're up the guts, lots of smoke, direct in your action, what you achieved is very like accountable. We can see you caught the pig. You did that, right? So you yeah. get to eat it. But- if I put in the if I put in the cordon and I didn't directly catch the pig, but my contribution to that was also important. You wouldn't have caught the pig without me putting in the cordon. Yeah. I have to now also feel that we should share the pig. Because you caught it, but my actions helped you catch it. So that's why I have to have that policy of like, you know, we should share stuff because I didn't catch it. You yeah. caught it. Yeah, yeah. But you wouldn't have without me. And that has served us when we were little tribes of people, for sure, right? But now as we get to this bigger, like, it, it's the direct contribution and the not-so-direct contribu- contribution. They're at such scale that in politics it just falls apart. And so, like, I think that you're dead right, and that's just my sort of weird way of explaining that there is, like, the pendulum swings, but it's because both sides are meant to be in action at the same time. And all forms of government are a little bit wrong because you get too much of one and then it has to swing back. Where wouldn't it be nice if we could just keep it, keep yeah. that pendulum swinging nice and tight, yeah. right? Which I think to an extent we do in Australia. And I think that's why our system is not too bad in the current way, setup that we have because the difference between political parties here is like... Pretty minimal. Yeah, I mean, they like it's... People get upset and be like, oh my God, the, the Labour or the Liberals. But like in reality, it's very little difference. Your noticeable difference day to day is pretty small depending on which party's in. Yeah. Right. And that's because we have a parliamentary system where you have to go up all the ranks. Yes. So we can't have a, there can't be a left field, a random left field person go, where the fuck they come from? Yeah. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Like we couldn't have a Macron. We couldn't have a Trump. It would never happen. It's no. physically impossible. No. Um, like, because you have to go through all of your local state federal then be elected internally yeah so it's it's a very different process totally it's got pros and cons yeah but anyway a long way from the topic yeah but twitter <laughs> it's are we advertising on it now what's going on like how do a plan you think, for it how do you think it will change your use of twitter well considering i don't use it will i'll probably begin? start using it yeah you think i think i'd start using it just for the pure intrigue of what's like what's what's going to happen yeah um i think I that I, I think that from a I think it's a very difficult business use case to get Elon to make it because so much is video consumption. Mm-hmm. And so on on the platform you mean? No, like so much of Social consumption media. these days is video and short like TikTok is completely it, it was it was the Twitter of video. Yeah. You know? So and yeah. they've they've changed the game so much. Um so I don't really know how they're gonna compete because the way in which Twitter's used is not conducive to advertising. Mm. So I, I don't know how they fix that. Yeah. So you think there'll be a total revamp of the platform and the way that it works? I mean, I mean maybe. Yeah. It's gonna, I mean, ha- like, I, I don't know. How, I mean, uh, listen, if anyone can figure it out, it's probably him. Because mm. um, he is, like, the greatest user. Like, mm. Tesla has a $0 marketing budget mm-hmm. because Elon has a Twitter. Yeah. You know? 
So it's like, do they figure out how to rev share? Mm-hmm. So, you know, like, do, do they have some sort of model where it's like, we can show a, 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 a correlative or causation effect on the increase of your revenue due to your adaptation of Twitter, and we want a percentage in that, mm, you know? And it's like, in order to do that, you get preferential treatment. If you sign up to that, then it's mm. like, you get preferential treatment, this is how you do it, and you, we get a rev share in the upside, or something like that. We get we get 0.5% upside. Yeah. You know, when you start adapting Twitter, and we'll make sure that your shit gets out there more. That's you know? interesting. Like, how, like, because that, like, I mean, that's for all the announcements for Twitter, for Tesla are. Mm-hmm. Like they had literally a zero. To, they have a CMO who's paid a shitload of money, um, who has a zero dollar marketing budget. Right. So how do they do it? Well, it's just like he just fucking posts. Obviously, Tesla has their own Twitter as well. No, oh, but but they don't uh, have like a rev share thing through through um, mm-hmm. promotion of Tesla or anything. That's they don't have anything in place like that. They don't have a paid. They don't have a paid advertising budget. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, they don't. Yeah. They don't do any paid ads on any platform. Okay. They obviously have like branding. They do branding, so yeah, they'll yeah, have yeah. like um, you know, they have billboards and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. They, they have all their stuff in the email camp. All that. Obviously, the marketing department costs money to run. Yeah. But like, they don't do paid ads. They don't do television. They don't do online. Mm-hmm. You've never seen a Tesla ad. Yeah. They're right. everywhere. Yeah. You know, and, and I so, want one so bad. Can't fucking buy one. <laughs> I know. That's I think that's part of it too. Yeah. Um. And the interesting thing is, like, but most of it has just come from Elon's Twitter. Yeah, okay. Where we're releasing a new Tesla. Perfect. Okay. Click here to buy. Oh, look, it's sold out. Do you, do you reckon it could even be worth his while to make sure that he maintains that funnel? Like, if they Oh, at, yeah. They that was at, part of the reason as well why I think it was essential that he not get kicked off. Yeah, okay. Like, so it's like, hey, like, Tesla, I think, is the second most valuable company on the planet. Okay. I think. What, like after Apple? After Apple, yeah. Uh, and they have a, a, an enormous revenue. Mm-hmm. Enormous. Like, it's huge. I think it's top five in the world. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so, buying Twitter for $44 billion, Yeah. It kind of makes sense. So, it could even just be he just bought an advertising department. Well, if you think about it, if he owns it as a private company, he could just make it. Like, is when Zuckerberg posts, everyone sees it. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, it comes up in everyone's feet. Everyone's feet. Follow feet. him or not. Yeah. Yeah, imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Tesla and Elon Musk, every single tweet they put out is seen by literally every user. Every morning, Bro, we all have to get up, salute. You couldn't buy that for less than $44 billion. <laughs> I mean, like, Jesus Christ. If, 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 if they gave me that for seven days, I could retire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you could sell a $97 product at a time. <laughs> like, legit. You could. You could have a you could have a forty seven dollar ebook if everybody saw it. Yeah. Fuck, man. Guys, I got this online course. You're not gonna believe it. Andrew Tate style. <laughs> what colors your fucking Bugatti? <laughs> I don't have one. Oh dear. Yeah. All right. That's that's uh, that's probably why I did it then, just to maintain his like advertising uh, <laughs> his funnel. Yeah. For Tesla. Gotta keep that funnel. And like stuff. SpaceX is gonna make money at some point. Yeah. In the boring company. Yeah. You know. All the other stuff he probably has planned to do. Yeah. Yeah. But to to wrap up, my favorite part on all of this has been watching the media panic about it and and the implication, the the inference that he's an idiot and doesn't know what he's talking about. It's crazy. It the, the media hates any new media though. They hate like mm. they hate anyone who's doing their own thing and they have to discredit them. And like sometimes they're just not sometimes they're credible. Like Project Veritas, I've seen them discredited. So it's like, no, dude, those dudes are like it's very hard to discredit a hidden video camera footage of a meeting where people are saying in context the things that they're being accused of. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've, I've watched some of those documentaries. Just look it up, man. They're fucking terrifying. They did one on CNN, and they did one on Fox News as well. They did one on uh, Twitter and, like, all the big tech companies. They have yep. hidden... They get people get jobs. Yeah. Hidden camera, the whole box and dice. Like, yep. the whole... Because they get protected under whistleblower laws and shit like that, right? Mm-hmm. So... Um, very interesting. Yeah, right. Yeah, they've got to check it out. But it's like all that stuff gets suppressed and you only see it if you go looking for it. Yeah, yeah. Because well, not anymore. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That, I think, is the fear, right? That that's like the loss of control of the narrative. Yeah. You reckon? Does it sound like Andrew Tate? <laughs> yeah, no, right. Daddy oh, I Tate. think it, I think it's a valid point, though, because like those guys have had it a particular way. Like when Walter Cronkite 
used to come on. People listened to Walter Cronkite. Yeah, yeah. And he was a reliable, neutral source of news information yep. that gave you the facts as they came in and you could decide. Yeah. And then that got molded into a bunch of really opinionated people giving really op-eds. Yeah. W- w- like, they were giving op-eds with a veneer of real news. And it's like, if you're offering your opinion... I don't think you should be on there. Like, just tell me what's happening and I can sort it out myself. Mm-hmm. You know, some issues I'm more right, some issues I'm more left, some I'm fucking smack dab in the middle. Yeah. Like, it's all fine. I can do it. But if you're if you're going to be feeding me a particular narrative, then, and you guys, it is news. Not most people just kind of take that as gospel. Like, if all you watched was Fox, it's like, okay, you're probably going to be one way. If all you watch is CNN, you're going to be one way. So it's like, it's very difficult to discern what the real information is because you can read the same story and you can get so many viewpoints. Like I saw a great thing the other day. This is probably about a year ago, actually. And it was a photo and it was like zoomed in. It was uh, like a black guy doing something. And then there was one narrative on that photo with a headline and article. Then it was another one with the same photo, but zoomed out a little bit more. Right, we had more context. And it was mm. a totally different narrative, totally different headline. Then there was what actually was going on. It was completely fucking innocuous. Yeah. And the left had gone crazy about it being some racial violation of some person who was being persecuted. Then the right had taken it with a bit more context and said, "No, it's actually the opposite." The, the opposite. And then the, what was really happening was fucking nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was like, oh well, there is no news story there. But hey, you got to get views. That's the issue. I mean, that's the issue in all of it is a clickbait. Of titles, you got to keep people on platforms. You got to give them a reason to be there. Yeah. Um, in, in a lot of the commentary I was watching this morning about it, the the economist that they were asking about it was like people, yeah, the people saying, "Oh, Twitter's going to divulge into a cesspool of of nonsense." And the economist guys like they're counting on that. Like, first of all, it already is, and second, like that's what people like. <laughs> so, like, av- you ever the, watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Yeah, the <laughs> idea that advertisers are going to pull the pin on that is like some might, but they'll quickly be replaced. That they're not going to create that vacuum's going to pull in new content because oh, yeah. there's, there's plenty of people that it, if you don't want to advertise there, that's fine. But you can advertise where there's no eyeballs, or you can advertise where there's lots yeah, of. Eyeballs. When you go on the YouTube advertiser, you just pay for the amount of views you want. Yeah, you don't go, but make sure they're Republican. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you make sure they're good people. Yeah. You just go, give me this many eyeballs, and they go, okay. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Just anyway, fight. sales. If I that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting content. I think that it for sales and marketing and everything that this uh, podcast is about, it is going to be big news. And, and speculating on why is what two guys do on a podcast. Yep. That's it. Goodbye. Bye. Put that coffee down. Down. down.